Welcome, welcome, welcome to St. Stephen's Church in Burke, Virginia. I'm Rob Robertson, one of the pastors here, along with Pastor Gian Kim and Pastor Forrest Teague. And on behalf of the entire worship team or media team of the Source Band, I welcome you to worship. Whether you are worshiping via live stream or worshiping later uh, through the uh, recorded version of this service, or you are gathered here in the sanctuary, it's wonderful to be worshiping the Lord with you today. We are doing something new today. This is a relaunch of our worship in the sanctuary, but it is also a time for something new for those of you who are joining us through live stream. Following the benediction today, there is a Zoom time of fellowship right after the benediction. So we hope that you will find that, uh, that connection uh, in the chat or on today's email and join Pastor Forrest for a time of fellowship following the benediction. Next Sunday is Father's Day and today is the last day to upload pictures if you would like to remember a father or those men that have been like fathers to you. Today is the last day, so we want to make sure that you get those pictures in our presentation for next Sunday. Sunday, uh, I'm sorry, Monday evening at 7.30 via Zoom is our next discussion of our New Testament readings. We will be meeting at 7.30. That, that link is in your email. And we will be focusing on the first six books of Paul's letter first letter to the Corinthians. So we will we'll be investigating uh, what Paul is, the circumstances and the issues that are going on in the Corinthian church. So we hope that you will uh, join us. We're a couple weeks away from our next sermon series titled Revealing God. And beginning on July the 4th, each Sunday will, or each, the message for each Sunday will come from our New Testament readings for the week. For example, on June the 28th, that Monday, we begin the reading of the Gospel of John, and we'll read chapter 1, 2, through 6, uh, through, uh, through Saturday. And then Pastor Gian will lead that message on the 4th of July from a scripture lesson within those, those six chapters. So we hope that you will be reading along with us uh, through revealing God. I hope that you got all, not only a bulletin, but you got a blue card that, about name tags. We hope that uh, you will, will use your name tag as we return to uh, worship together. It's so important that we uh, use names, learn names, maybe relearn names, right? Uh, so please uh, sign up for a name tag. If you sign up through the end of the month, uh, those are gratis. So we, we want you to know how important that is as we continue to build our fellowship together. If you're on the live stream this morning, don't forget the chat feature. Make sure that you're passing the peace of Christ with one another. And at this time, I invite Leslie Hatch to come for our call to worship. Please stand as you are able to join me in the call to worship. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. We shall mount up with wings like eagles. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not be faint. Let us now join our hearts and voices in our opening prayer. Sovereign God, 
We give thanks for the majestic creation that you called good. Open our hearts and minds to be creators of your peace with justice in your world. Remind us of the responsibility with which you entrusted us to care for the work of your hands. Move us in your grace to repair what is broken in your world and to plant holy seeds so that your garden will be for all people once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening song, Indescribable. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creation's revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. Struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God, who has told every lightning bolt where it should go, forcing heavenly storehouses laid in its Sun and gave source to its light, yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. Untamable, awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God, incomparable, unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing God. You are amazing. recognizing uh, graduates today. We have 22 graduates and their names will be on the screen shortly. 21 high school graduates and one uh, post-grad uh, that has re received an MBA. And so we want to lift them and celebrate them and ask God to bless the next steps in their journey. So let's pray together. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom, we are taught the way and the truth. 
Bless our graduates as they now finish this course of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside them and all who supported them along the way. Walk with these graduates as they have completed one journey and move forward in life. In confusion of purpose, strengthen their many talents and skills. Instill in them a confidence in the future you planned, where energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people. A time to remember and move on, and a time to believe what love is bringing through your grace. Amen. Amen. And so as we continue our celebration this morning, with praise and thanksgiving, we prepare to think about how we are, give back to the Lord. We give as a part of our membership vows by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Let us pray together as we give thanks to the Lord for all the ways that God has blessed us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for your amazing love and grace, for the ways that you have, have blessed us, for the ways that you have helped us to persevere and, and meet the challenges of life. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless us, that we might be a blessing to others, that, Lord, through each of us, that you might bless the world and that the good news of Jesus Christ would be proclaimed in word and in deed. And all God's people said, Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been All my life you've been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. Your 
goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. Give you every breathing. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you've been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you, Source Band. Thank you so much. This morning we have two readings. We begin in the Psalms, and then we move to the Hebrew Scriptures as well uh, with the prophet Isaiah before we join in our, our readings. Let's join together in our prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Loving God, you are great and glorious, high above all things, yet you are interested in every one of your children. Lord, we just praise you for your amazing love and grace. And Lord, we ask that you would attune our ears to hear your voice this day, that we might live humbly and walk wisely before you in spirit and in truth. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first reading comes from Psalms 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And now from the prophet Isaiah in the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is Full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, 
now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The first time that I can remember really closely examining today's lesson from Isaiah was, well, it's getting close to 25 years ago. After I began officially discerning God's call on uh, calling me to full-time ministry. That process officially began when I spoke to my local church pastor and I was told, read the Red Book and then let's make an appointment to talk further. The actual title of the Red Book is Christian, the Christian as Minister. It was a great place to start because, you see, all Christians are called to ministry, all of us. And all Christians are ministers, all of us. Yet, not everyone is called to full-time or even pastoral ministry. And this book examined many, many opportunities for full-time ministry in and beyond the church. But there's another reason why that book was such a great resource for me. You see, I was struggling with my call. Yes, I was pretty sure that God was calling me, but I was wondering why. Why me? I'm a businessman, and, and I'm an entrepreneur. Why, Lord, are you calling me? Plus, I wasn't quite sure where God was calling me to go, even though I was pretty sure that I was being called to pastoral ministry. After reading that book, meeting with my pastor, then meeting with the staff parish relations committee at the local church, I was invited to meet with the district committee of ordained ministry to talk more about my call. And at that meeting, I told the committee that I felt compelled, compelled to pursue what I suspected was a call to pastoral ministry. And while I had tried to resist, I just felt like I couldn't any longer. I couldn't resist God's call any longer. And the strangest thing happened at that meeting Instead of throwing me to the curb, they approved me as an inquiring candidate, and they gave me a mentor, the Reverend George Knees. And we began to work through not the red book, but the purple book, a workbook that all inquiring candidates complete with the help of a mentor, maybe over five or six or perhaps even more sessions. Understanding God's Call is the name of that purple book. And that book has lots of things for the inquiring candidate to, to examine about their own experiences, their own life, their family life, but also certainly Scripture as well. And one of the first things that you examine in that book is the call stories in Scripture, including the amazing call story of Isaiah that we read earlier today. In it, Isaiah has a vision that is so clear that he gives it a chronological marker in the year. It happened in the year that King Uzziah died. But Isaiah's experience was not just a theophany or the scene of God's presence. It was God calling him to ministry as a prophet. And in his vision, Isaiah sees the Lord on the throne, surrounded by seraphs. While flying, one of the great creatures calls to the other and says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And at the sound of this voice, the temple shakes and fills with smoke, and, and Isaiah responds as most biblical characters do when they have a theophany he is awestruck he says woe is me 
I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. A seraph flies to him with a hot coal and touches his mouth and his lips, and a cleansing by fire happens that blots out his guilt and his sin. And then Isaiah hears the Lord, Whom shall I send? And freshly absolved and relieved of guilt, Isaiah says, Here I am, send me. The account in Isaiah 6 can be seen as a crisis event in Isaiah's life as he bears his soul before the Lord. But more than that is a profound experience of awe and wonder as he encounters the divine. Have you ever experienced such all? Have you ascribed to the Lord glory and strength as David directs us in Psalm 29? Have you heard the voice of the Lord over the waters as you've walked along a shoreline of a great ocean as it extended far, far beyond the horizon? Have you heard the voice of God thunder? How about the still, small voice that can rock your soul? In 1 Kings chapter 19, the prophet Elijah describes it as a sound of sheer silence. Maybe you've heard that sound of sheer silence on a mountaintop in Shenandoah National Park as seemingly countless peaks are out in the distance under a sunset. It's in a place like those that, that I have, have simultaneously experienced being feeling so very, very tiny compared to all of God's creation and even smaller compared to the glory of God. But it's also in those times that I have experienced the assurance of God's great and unconditional love and and care for me. That's all. Theologian Frederick Buchner writes about experiencing such all. I remember seeing a forest of giant redwoods for the first time. There were some small children nearby giggling and chattering and pushing each other around, but nobody had to tell them to quiet down as we entered. They quieted down all by themselves. Everybody did. You couldn't hear a sound of any kind. It was like coming into a vast empty room. Two or three hundred feet high, the the redwoods stood. You had to crane your neck back as far as it would go to see the leaves at the top. The trees made their own twilight out of the bright California day. There was stillness and stateliness about them that seemed to become part of you as you stood there, stunned by the sight of them. They had been growing in that place for going on 2,000 years. With infinite care, they are growing even now. You could feel them doing it. They made you realize that all your life you had been mistaken. Oaks and ashes, maples and chestnuts and elms, you had seen for as long as you could remember. But never until this moment had you so much as dreamed what a tree really was. That's all. Never until this moment had you so much as dreamed what a tree really was. I've never been to a redwood forest, but that description has made me add it to my bucket list. How about you? Anybody ready for a road trip? Yeah? But as glorious as a redwood forest must be, it does not compare to the majesty of God, the creator of all things. 
Rabbi Abraham Joshua Herschel, a leading Jewish theologian, philosopher, and a political activist during the 20th century, insisted that all is critical for not taking the world for granted and thus losing the ability to experience it with depth and reverence. Thus all is not only a pathway to knowledge, he says, but all is also a pathway to wisdom and to Almighty God. Yet we live, it seems, in an age that, that we don't let much all us. We take for granted wonders that previous generations would have marveled at. But all still happens, usually unexpectedly. And while we can't create all or purchase all at Target and yet not even Amazon, we can still learn to recognize it. And we can discover, we can seek to discover what it may be telling us when all happens to us. Something directly spiritual is going on when we feel all, whether we recognize it or not. Even if we don't believe in God, something deeply spiritual is happening. Even if we don't understand that Jesus Christ shows us the great love of God for all people throughout the world. All creates a paradigm shift from the world is all about me to the world is larger than me. And even this is God's world. This is what David is writing about in Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory and of his name, worship the Lord in holy splendor. Nothing and no one are more worthy of our all than Almighty God. And God, in the power of the Holy Spirit, uses various gateways to come into our lives and to bring us renewal. All is one of those gateways. We would call it as United Methodists a a means of grace. It allows us to sense possibilities that we had never imagined before. Certainly it's very useful in scientific research, but, but it also draws us into God's mysterious presence and assures us that we are known by Almighty God. But all also says to you and me, this is life beyond what I have ever known before. It opens us up to God who is the source of love and faith and a hope that is deeper than we have ever known or imagined. It guides us to declare like David in Psalm 139, for it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When we are awestruck, it's a good idea to consider what God might be saying to us through that emotion and to be aware that a shift may be coming or being called for in our life. Of course, Isaiah wasn't walking along a shoreline, and he wasn't sitting on a high peak when he saw and heard the Lord. He was in the temple. He was seeking God's presence when the Spirit moved, just like we are in God's temple today, and we are gathered, whether we're here in the sanctuary or we are coming and and worshiping through the live stream, we are gathered in God's temple. The Holy Spirit, you see, is still moving and working to continually transform us, even though we often resist it. Being born and reborn in the Spirit is never easy. 
it can be an uncomfortable process. All we need to do is ask Isaiah. But it brings something new and important into our lives. In the last week, you may have heard the story of Timothy Harrison. Harrison had just completed his senior year of high school at Woodlawn High in Birmingham, Alabama, and he was set to graduate on May the 27th. But instead of going to his graduation ceremony, he went to work at the local Waffle House where he had been working for about a month. When Harrison arrived, his manager was surprised. He wasn't on the schedule, and he asked Harrison, why aren't you going to your graduation? And Harrison replied, I don't want to miss work. Well, that wasn't exactly the truth. Because you see, Harrison didn't have a ride to the location of the ceremony. He didn't have the proper clothes. He didn't have a cap and a gown. Another co-worker asked, what do we need to do? And the Waffle House team banded together buying Harrison dress clothes and including slacks and a, a dress shirt and a tie. They raced to the high school to get him a cap and a gown and a ticket to graduation. And then they drove him 20 miles across town to that hall where the ceremony was being held. They got there just in time. Harrison was in awe because of the loving actions of his co-workers of the Waffle House. And when he put on those new clothes in his graduation robe, it was a transformative experience. He said, when I put on the clothes, that was a different feeling. I don't even know the words. A million dollars? It was the best feeling. One co-worker shared to see his face when he came out after graduation. Now that was priceless. All is still breaking into this world. But the story of Timothy Harrison didn't end with commencement. It's still going on. After Harrison's story went viral, Lawson State Community College offered him a full scholarship, including books. And he says, to know that I have a path to go somewhere, that's something new. Yes, it's something new. It's all. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. May we be reminded that we are not only being made new in the spirit, but we are being called to put on Christ, the new clothes of Jesus Christ, and we are being called by God to God's work of renewal in this world. What do we need to respond and to participate in this work? We need hearts open to be reborn and reshaped, to be made new in the Spirit. We need eyes to see the needs around us, we need to trust in the Lord, to ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Yes, the Spirit is still moving. The Spirit is still offering us grace. May we respond in love and like Isaiah, may our cry be, Lord, here I am. Send me. And all God's people said, Amen.
be seated. At this time, I invite uh, Tom Bradley and the Burnett family to come as we welcome new members into the St. Stephen's family. Brothers and sisters in Christ, baptism is an outward, invisible sign of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers in his righteousness and heir of life eternal. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into the fellowship of Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift, offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Good morning. I present a Andy and Jade Burnett for membership by transfer of their membership from a United Methodist Church. Standing with them are their children, Leo, Grace, and Anne. On behalf of the church, I'd like to ask you, Andy and Jade, these questions. Do you renounce, renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. This is the last question for you. <laughs> According to the grace given you, will you remain faithful members of Christ the Holy Church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. Leo, Grace, and Anne, I have two questions for you. Are you ready for that? Do you know that Jesus loves you? If so, say, I do. Will you share the good news that Jesus loves everyone in the world? If so, say, I will. Perfect. And I have a question for you, our congregation. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your resurrection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life, include this wonderful family now before you in your care? Please join me now in response in the printed in your bulletin. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought forth through the Jordan to the land which you promised. 
In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of water and bring to our remembrance that in our baptism you wash away our sin and clothe us in righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and being raised with Christ we may share in his final victory. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. And all God's people said, Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Burnett family, I have one more, one more question for you. As a member of the United Methodist Church, Will you do all in your power to strengthen its ministry? And will you be loyal to St. Stephen's Church, faithfully participating in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. Church, this is for you. As members of the household of God, I commend the Burnett family Andy, Jade, Leo, Grace, and Anne, to your love and care. Will you do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love? If so, say, we will. We will. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, established you and strengthened you so by the power of the holy spirit that you may live in grace and peace forevermore amen church let us celebrate with our new members welcome them in with a joyful noise share just a few reminders or announcements before you leave and you may be wondering how we leave this place I know this place is full of joy and worship now but unfortunately we cannot have a chat and fellowship following the service not yet so as we leave uh, please allow the pastors to leave this place first and the new family so that they can say hello to you and you can welcome them and we'll be outside in the church uh, so that from the back pew you can leave. And I'm sure that some of the ushers might you to guide you. And some, all of you know how to make social distancing uh, so that we can have a safe and a very welcoming and a joyful Sunday after the worship service. And in the parking lot, you're welcome to have your own fellowship with our church uh, members and brothers and sisters in Christ. And also, we are sure that there are some people who couldn't come to church for different reasons. So we have a bag of candies in the gathering place. So we encourage you to take a bag of candies so that you can deliver it to those who cannot worship, uh, worship with us today as a sign of the love of Jesus Christ, which is available for all the people. Although this service is not available for everyone because of different restrictions and the personal situations, we hope to remind all the members and all the people in this community to know that the worship and the love of God is for them. So don't forget to take a bag of candies and deliver the love of God with and add your own love too, so that they can feel the love and the grace from their church family and also the neighbors. That's all I have. And Pastor Rob? Thank you. Thank you. Dear family, I want to thank you for being part of our live stream worship today. I'm so thankful for the gift of your presence. Our virtual worship service 
art through live stream remains an important part of our virtual church strategy. You're important to us. And so we are doing something new today. We're starting a time of fellowship following our service right after the benediction. We encourage you to get connected to via Zoom. And the link for this Zoom is found in the chat in YouTube, but also in Sunday's email. Please connect and, and be part of this maybe 15 minutes of, of fellowship following worship. Pastor Forrest will be leading this today. I hope you're blessed by this time of fellowship following worship. Now receive this blessing and all of God's greatness, mercy, and grace. We respond, Lord, here I am. Send me. Would you say that with me? Lord, here I am. Send me. Go and grace and peace. Amen.